Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Thursday, September 15th, 2022. And we're going to this job that I gave an estimate to about, uh, about a month ago. There's a link right up here in the description. Uh, right up here, right there. Check it out. It's on my Uncensored channel. That's the Mikey Pipes Uncensored channel. That's where I keep it uncut, unedited, raw, and most importantly, uncensored. So we're taking out this Thatcher, Thatcher, right? Thatcher oil-fired four-zone boiler. We're keeping the water heater because it's brand new. It's gas-fired already. And today we're going to rip out all the heating equipment piping, the boiler, all that near-boiler piping in the mechanical room, in the boiler room. And we're going to run some gas piping. We're preparing to install not only then, the U.S. Boiler Alpine 105. It's going to be epic. We're not going to do that today, but today we're going to take out the boiler. We're going to haul it out back to the shop. We're going to dump it at Gershow, and we are going to just get everything prepped and take a detailed, comprehensive material list because next Monday, Monday coming up, we're going to put in the Alpine 105. It's going to be real, real, real sweet. And I already did a manual J load calculation. I measured all of the slant fit and baseboard throughout the house. So I know exactly that the Alpine 105 is the perfect machine for it. And if you noticed yesterday's video right up here as well, you'll see how I do a load calculation when I'm replacing a hydronic boiler. It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Slant fit number 30, baseboard, estimate 600 feet, uh, sorry, 600 BTUs per linear foot at 180 degrees. And voila, it's very easy very very easy that is not the only, that's not really the official way of doing it but that's the way that works for me and you're not oversizing all right before that i got some gifts in the mail i want to share that with you guys so let's see what we got so much for a combustible get oh it went off it took a while though yeah so this company called uh Toptis sent us these things this is the is it broken? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> this company called Toptis sent us these things. These are the combustible gas leak detectors. This is the TP210. Um, they sent it to me. They wanted me to do an unboxing. So let's do an unboxing real quick, ladies and gentlemen. So you open up the box, and it comes with a piece of instruction here. All right. All right, like that. Oh, by the way, uh, here's my flying saucer straight from Roswell. This is from the UFO Museum, the 17th, 75th anniversary of the 1947 Roswell incident. Thank you very much for sending this to me, guys. Really appreciate the gifts in the mail. So once we open it up, we have a manual, and then we have, uh, it looks like the packaging is kind of okay. Oh, we even have a little pouch, a uh, like a leatherette pouch. You can already imagine this is going to get filthy, dirty in your trucks, but there's the pen, right? And we'll also get, wow, Duracell batteries. Duracell OEM. Wow, genuine. This is going to be a knockoff. You know it's got to be a knockoff. So there we get it. We have two batteries, two AA, two AAA batteries. We have the pen itself. It comes with a little pa carrying pouch right there. And there's that. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you want one of them? Would you like one of them? Kinda. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want one of these PT210s, email me, Mike at MikeyPipes.com. First one to email me about this and what they would do with it is going to, I'll have it shipped to them anywhere in the uh, United States, right? Perfect. They might be sending me them too because they emailed me. Okay, then we'll give away two of them. Did, did you tell them you were going to do a video on them? Yeah. Okay. Did, you, did they offer to pay you anything? No. You got to say, listen, what's the offer? Oh, I smell a cigarette. You smell that cigarette? My nose is like a bloodhound right now. Four days. Oh, wow. My nose is like a bloodhound. Four feffin' days! I wonder if it goes off near a cigarette. Bring it over by Mike. Let's see. It has to load. What? It has to finish doing this. What is that? The loading thing. Calibrating it. Again? Oh, you had it off. Yeah. No, it's not a... It's a combustible gas leak pen. It's not gonna go off. I don't think so. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be, that's metal in your lungs. <laughs> oh, oh, heads or tails? Damn it! Oh, let's see if we can get this again. The flying saucer. 
Hold on. Will it even stick to the door? Yeah, it'll stick to the door. Let's see if we try this again. All right. The flying saucer. So here we go. One, two, three. Come on. We can do it. All right. Let's try it like this. Oh, come on. What a shitty magnet. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at what we're taking out today. Not terrible. Not terrible. We have one, two, three, and four zones here. There's our domestic cold water in. And there is an ill-placed temperature and pressure tridicator gauge. We have a relay, Aquastat relay. Come on guys, come on, behave yourself. And this old Thatcher. Look at that old Drain Thatcher. Doesn't really matter. Draining We're draining everything down. The goal today is to, and by the way, let me tell you about the end game of this here. The end game, see that wall right there? Yeah. Okay. We're going to give him back this boiler room. We're going to rip out all the pipe. We're going to mark everything first, by the way. Supply and return. So we have four supplies, four returns. We're going to mark everything. And then on Monday, we're going to take a piece of plywood to that wall. And we're going to mount the Alpine there. And run all the piping with Unistrut and Kendolf clamps. So it'll, be very, be, yeah, it'll be very, very nice. Very, very nice. And we're keeping the water here. All right. Right now we're draining down. We got the Milwaukee M18 transfer pump hooked up to the drain in the bottom. We're going to start opening up some of the check valves here. We got four of them all together. So these check valves, they act as traffic diverters, you know, water diverters, not water diverters, but they only let water flow in one direction. So for example, we're leaving the boiler right here and the flow, direction of flow is from this left to this right. Um, so we need these check valves here to allow all water to go only in one direction. So let's say we had these four zones here and we had no check valves on any of these zones. So these two didn't exist, these two didn't exist. When one zone would power on, just one, we would actually get reverse flow from the three other zones, right? And all four will heat up at the same time. So that's the reason why we have check valves installed on hydronic systems when we're zoning with circulators. When you're zoning with zone valves, it's not that nece it's not necessary because the zone valves acts as the valve, right? Or that one-way check valve. So right now we're just opening up this lever on top, these old bell and gossets. All right, this is a one inch check valve and you notice we can come in from here we can come in from there we exit in one direction mike's working on that one up there a little stubborn 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 as a mule and we're going to look for another drain here okay, so we don't get airlock and i just cracked open the third station right here and you can see we're getting introduction of air inside the line and it's helping us to drain a little bit faster so i'm going to take this Ferguson bucket. You see the pump's now sucking in some more water. We're gonna open up this one as well. Just to get some air in there. Alright. Hear that? She's sucking in. Let's take a look on the other side. Here is our main domestic cold water valve coming in. Right. Which goes here, it goes around to here, which is actually utilizing hot water. And the plan here today, the plan is that on this wall, this cinder block wall, we're going to take a piece of plywood, four by eight piece of plywood, we're going to mount it on this wall here, and we're going to mount our boiler to this wall, the new Alpine ALP 105. Old Thatcher, she ain't that big, but she's got some weight to her. Definitely got some weights to it. Very, very nice. All right. I'm going to just going to stop right now. And I'm going to help these guys out. All right. 
unfortunately, no asbestos. So I guess it wasn't that old where it got abated. I don't think it got abated. What do you think, Mike? No. You think this thing is just like that old? No, it's hot water. It's hot seat. Oh, it's right. That's right. So for identification purposes, this line, this piece of BX armored cable here, that's our inlet coming in from the switch. I, those one, two, three, and this white one, those are our four thermostat wires. Low voltage, all this right here, this all gets deaded. This went to all the circulators and the boiler and the controls, firing controls. So all this is gets dead. I'm gonna cut all this stuff out. Here's our domestic water inlet. We'll have to clean this up a little bit. But there she is. We have, let's count the sections if we may. We have one. Ooh, uh oh. No. <laughs> one, two, three? No. Is this really three sections? Yeah, one and two. Wow. This is a three section boiler. Peter! Where's Peter? You think he had his Wheaties this morning? No. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Not too shabby. Lean it against the wall for right now. Okay, let's put the next one. Easy peasy. And don't forget to wear your PPP. I mean, that's that's free money from the government. PPE. No, hold on to the side. Wear your PPE. Okay. All right. All right. Put that down. left that's all that's what's left one more section that's gonna be a bitch you know it's gonna be a bitch that's solid that is solid baby Whew. it's gonna really look really nice we got a burn them out on that wall right down there beautiful it's gonna be beautiful All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's the boiler, the three sections. And boy, you know, you got two mid, mid age, mid 40 year old guys and a 22 year old, no, 21 year old, but we manhandled these beasts, these wilder beasts. This one, heavy. That one, second heaviest, and this one, the lightest. There she is. Now, Peter, are you ready? Four. You are now gonna be, t oh, don't worry about that for now, cause it's just gonna get more and more shit in there. Let's go downstairs. You have a little scoop, like, um, yeah, you know, the little the shovel, the little trowel, I mean not the shovel, the dustpan. Yep. All right, you got garbage bags downstairs? Uh, actually, no trucks have garbage bags. No trucks have garbage, I have. I have to the ones I had in there. No, they're, they're all gone, we have no garbage bags. I can use a bucket. Okay, yeah, Mike, use the bucket. Mike has like four buckets, so I figure I'll fill them all. Okay, let's use buckets. We have garbage bags in the shop. We gotta clean up the garbage and then dump all this stuff. And we gotta pick up gas pipe. And that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen, because right now it is 8.39 in the morning. You know that? It's 8.39 in the morning. You've been an oil technician your whole entire life, haven't you? Yeah. Right? You've replaced boilers before. Yes, I did. Right? And normally, what time do you get done at the end of the day? Done at the end of the day? Uh, three, three o'clock, three okay. thirty. And normally, what time is the boiler gone? 
boilers going. Well, we had guys do it for us, or when we were doing it, depended on how big the boiler was. Uh, we get the boiler out, not at eight thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Probably 10, 11 <laughs> Hey, I was union. I hear you. I think, it, I think it makes a difference that the boss is on every job yeah. of this caliber yeah. where we don't putz around. Uh, well, Before... That's, that's one of the reasons why I hired you. Well, thank you. Let me tell you something. Years ago, when I just first started out, right? You know, I, would, I could sell these jobs, right? But I can't do them because I'm just one person. Yeah. I hired this, 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 this uh, subcontractor. It was a yeah. plumbing company. They had a few extra trucks laying around then. I would pay him for the day, 1200 bucks for the day. We we're talking about years ago, yeah. right? They would show up around 9 o'clock, right? The old boiler, oil to gas conversion like this, would be out probably by 12, 1230. Then they hang out for about an hour for lunch. And I swear, 9 o'clock at night, they're done. For like nine two or three. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. And because the boss wasn't around, it was it was me. And I'm not really the boss. I'm not their boss, but I'm the one. I'm the one paying them indirectly. Yeah. So eh, whatever. I wanted it done a little faster than that. Yeah. At night. By the way, those cigarettes smell real good. By the way. Can, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm day four. Day four. Okay. Okay. As long as my mother-in-law stays away from me, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> not a lot, but. You know, I can't even imagine, in all your years of service. To the trades, how many steam boilers and how many steam pipes you have to cut out and repair and you know tap out out of those yeah. threads? Yeah. It's crazy. These these tools, I tell you, they have. No, well, I had this special. I they have, have stories to tell. Tool. I have that in the sawzall box. That you know, when you did uh, inside the pipes, you know, you cut it. Mm -hmm. That special tapping. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With the loop on yep. it, and that thing worked great. Now, this was mostly splitting. Yeah. Boilers and yep. everything else. If you want chisels, you did you see how we did that, right? Yeah. We took the little uh, yeah. uh, impact hammer, yeah. you know, rotary hammer, with I the was little like, chisel. What's he doing with that? With the little thing? chisel. Yeah. I learned from one of my YouTube uh, viewers. Yeah. I said, listen, Mike, you have the rotary hammer, little impact hammer, right? M18 yeah. Milwaukee. Put a little chisel on it, yeah. set it just for hammer. And listen, it takes a little bit of time, but it's yeah. better than, you know. With ha listen, you hit your hand once with that, with that lump hammer. I've lost it. I've lost it. <laughs> But uh, very generous of you, very very generous of you. But I, you know, the tools though, the twenty four and the thirty six, epic, epic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Glass gauge. Oh, I, I know you do uh, hydronic. Gear. Yeah, and look at this. You know, look at all those oil things. I think Steve Lab would love to have this. Maybe I'll send it to him. <laughs> that guy's an idiot. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I, I I go on this thing and I was watching. Yeah. And he goes on oil jobs. Yeah. Oh, look at the filter. It's filthy. And he goes, oh, look at the nozzle. It's filthy. And, and he doesn't clean the pump. The The filter's dirty. The nozzle's dirty. It's you see, dirty I really wouldn't know. See, I'm not an oil mechanic or a tech, and I'll never claim to be. And, and, I, and I complain to him all the time. I go, clean the fucking pump. <laughs> Don't you have gas? <coughs> but, he's got a, but he's got a cute little dog. Little Miss Missy, Miss Molly, bucket? Molly, that rug rat. <laughs> no, no, all good. That, that's wrong. But he he don't know what he's doing on that when it comes to oil. How and, many years experience you got in oil? Thirty-two. Thirty-two years, and you're retired now. Yeah. Wow. And you got a home in Florida. Yeah. And in New York. Yeah. So you've done quite well for yourself. Yeah. You got a nice pickup truck, beautiful family, grandkids. Look at that. Look at all of you accomplished yeah, in life. I, I know, but I. I you know, I'm only 61. I mean, I had the surgeries. Yep. And that's that's what took me out. I hear you. And I can't I can't do anything. I mean, just I used to swing that thing around with one hand. Listen, if you ever bored one day, <laughs> I got a great idea. If you ever bored one day, you want to ride along with me for one morning, a couple jobs, and, 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 and in a winter, just to hang out with bullshit, you know, shoot I won't the be shit here during the winter. Oh yes, yeah, right. You're in Florida. I like, <laughs> I, I'm very interested in the AC stuff. I've okay. Learned a lot. It's amazing stuff. I, I, lo I love I HVAC I, more than you boilers. Know, you're absolutely right. If you ain't testing, you're, you're guessing. guessing. Exactly. You're right. Absolutely. All right. So I got Peter right now. Hi, Mom. How's it going, Mom? Hi, Mrs. Mom. Let's see if there's a line at the scrapyard. Alternatively, we're just going to dump it right at, right at my curb. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> okay, there's no one here. Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. All right. 
I think we're going to have a little wager this morning. What the scrap value of this boiler is. What the scrap value of the boiler is, all right? We're going to weigh in. Peter, you want to take a guess what this is all worth? Uh, just this, this, and this? Yeah. We got to we gotta dump one. All right. Peter, yes, what's your wager? Uh, 70. 70 bucks. I got 80 bucks. So I got 80 bucks. Peter has 70 bucks. What do you have? The closest without going over, I am going to send something to. Closest without going over. Mikey Pipes is gonna hook you up, all right? What do you think the dollar value of that scrap hole was worth? Mmm, dollar value of the scrap hole. Mmm. Thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. We're back at the shop right now. We have to just pick up a couple things that we uh, forgot before. And I'm going to reveal the amount on the way to back to the job. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we just left the shop, washed up the hands a little bit. We're heading back to uh, the shop, and on the way to the shop, we're on our way back to the job. Uh, on the way there, we're gonna stop by Ferguson, say hi to my uh, my friend Asher. He's my contact inside of Ferguson. We're gonna pick up a few fittings, and um, we're gonna do the reveal right now. All right, so all the votes are in and tabulated. There's no cheating. You're a cheater. Mikey Pipes is gonna make you give you a pair of cement shoes. You don't want some cement shoes now. You hear? We want to just enjoy life and tits, you know, things like that. So, Peter guessed 70. I guessed 80. You guys guessed whatever you guessed. Well, holy shit. <laughs> what is it? Wow. Guys. $96.80. <laughs> holy shit. I was... That's more than a lot more than I expected too. Damn, and think about it. I was about to drop off a C note at the curb. Yeah. Damn! You know, I know the times are rough, you know, but damn, I almost gave a guy a C note at the curb. I'm smart. I'm smart. So the closest without going over. I am going to send one of those brand new Pipe Doctor and Mikey Pipe shirts too. The long sleeve jump offs. You know what I'm talking about? The ones from yesterday's video? You know, the winter 2022 shirts. Did you, you know what I'm talking about? you see it? I don't see it. No. Nope. It's like the whole, if you ain't testing, you're guessing. With me in the back, with the Pipe Doctor, full color right there in the uh, the left chest. It's tits. Really tits. So if, if you guessed, closest without going over, I'm going to take the top three winners. The top three winners. I got them available medium, large, extra large, and 2X. I'm sorry, you big fat boys, you big fat fucks. 3X, no bueno. No bueno. Oh, shit. I keep forgetting. This is the real channel, not the uncensored channel. God damn! We are now a self-service counter. Browse the shelves for all of your, your product needs. And then pocket. And then pocket it. <laughs> and then pocket it. Look at this. It is self-service. So, self-service for this. I'm joking. <laughs> I guess it kind of makes sense. I know, but th this, you know what? This has got to be an absolute, extremely expensive fitting. We have inch and a half by one inch by one inch. That's crazy. What else we got here? Look how, you know what's crazy? That someone actually took the time and set every single piece up like this way. That is a complete waste of labor, by the way. Complete waste. <laughs> oh, we have some like flare. Nice. PVC galvanized. All right. Let's get the front door out of here because we need to go lay some pipe. And if you need some pipe, pip lid, pip lid, pip. If you need some pipe laid, 516-348-6300. Pipe Doctor Home Services. We got you. Got you. All right. So we just left Ferguson, ladies and gentlemen. It is 930 in the morning. 
Uh, I'm gonna stop by the deli, pick up the guy's breakfast. Peter just wants a drink, Mike wants a drink. Well, since I ain't smoking anymore, I feel like all the money I saved by not smoking cigarettes, I'm tripling that and I'm eating. I'm eating like an effing pig. It's not bad, but I, listen, well, it's rough. It's rough, because I'm hungry. And I want to smoke, but I don't. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Let's go buy by the Beekman's Deli. Get some breakfast. Oh, oh, he's pulling out. Perfect. Perfect. The deli. That's right. The gas is off. <laughs> when it's done, when done, it's on. You want to take a guess what? we got to fix this, too. You want to take a guess? Temporary for now. Flu. You want to take a random guess? Well, actually, no. An educated guess. What do you think the scrap value of the boiler was? Uh, the boiler itself? Everything that was in that truck. You saw everything that was here, right? Everything. That means the Mongo, the boiler. I don't separate. Uh, I just... 25 bucks. Not close. 125. 96.80. Oh, okay. And I was about to leave it at the curb. You know, that's what I normally do. Because yeah. I'm right down the block from a scrapyard. Yeah, I know. And I just dump stuff at the curb and I feed people. Yeah. Technically, right? Yeah. But there was no line when I passed when I was driving past the scrapyard. I was like, you know what? Thank I pulled you. in ten minutes later, ninety six dollars eighty cents later. Yeah. Richer. <laughs> well what we used to do, we take it out, we put it in the truck like you did. Yep, separate go everything. The, go to the scrapyard, whatever we got for it. Divide, divide it up. No. We, that would buy us because we'd be there. When we when we did jobs, yeah. a three section boiler, three days. Four section boiler, four, four days. days. Why? Five section, five. <laughs> it was union, a union shop. That's union, and that's how the a lot of the shops were. Wow. Okay, but that would buy you lunch and breakfast for all those days. For those days, based on how many sections there were. Yes. Wow. That's impressive. That's what we. That's what we would do. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Mikey Pipes does not disappoint. Does not disappoint. What has he got here? Let's go see what he's got. Uh, <coughs> you can tell he's a true oil mechanic because everything's right. in a bucket. There's a regular CO2. It, oh, there it is. You put your thing on there. Now, this is what they came up with later. This is a back pressure because if it, the oil line was really clogged, it would go. It'll, it'll blow pop, back at you. It'll go pop, 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 pop. Uh. So that you don't split the oil line. Punch a hole in it. Mm. But you can take this off, put your fittings on there and. Look at that. See? From one generation to the next. But I would have, you know, a hose to drain expansion tanks in there. So how do you drain expansion tanks? Oh, we're talking about the ones hanging in the ceiling that you have to drain, actually physically yeah, drain. Yeah. Oh, see, you're old school. Yeah. No such thing yeah, as automatic yeah. diaphragm, the external number 30. When you're, when you're... That extra tank, I used it yesterday. <laughs> on your, point, on your boiler I here? I blew back the line. Why? Just to blow back? To blow back. I blew back the line to the tank. Okay. So that I could put a plug at the end over there at the wall. Uh... So you could take that line out. So it, everything's off, blown into the tank, and then we get the guy over here Perfect. to pump out the tank. How many? How much oil you got left in the tank? Oh, uh, fortunately, a half a tank. Oof. Where's the oil tank? In the bedroom. Oh, it is. Behind that wall. You got a guy? No, not yet. Okay, I got a guy. If you got a guy, I got a guy. He's, I got a guy, but it, it, the guy, this guy, he did a job for me uh, yesterday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, Oceanside, two seventy-five gallon to oil tank. Right there in the garage. Oh, that's check. <laughs> you know what? He, take a while. Guess how much he charged. Right in, right in the garage. If anything. Half, what? half a tank of oil. Half a tank. What? Five hundred. Bingo. Bingo. Five hundred. Yep, five hundred on the dot. Yeah. yeah, nice. If you recall, there was a wilderbeast here. That's now gone in its entirety. Uh, I have these two half-inch pecs. That's one zone. This is another. This one and that one right there is three. And this one and this one is four. We ran uh, 20 feet of one inch from the meter. We reduced down to three quarter with a one by three quarter reducing 90, threw in a, a gas cock with a plug. 
And on Monday, we're gonna build a two by four framed wall here with a piece of three quarter inch plywood. We're gonna paint a nice metallic silver. The black, it's gonna make this room look even more smaller and more confined. I think of a brighter color, like not brighter color, but a more lighter color will not make this as dark. I gave him the option, listen, give me 4K, I'm gonna put a uh, Burnham Alliance SL40 right here, indirect water heater. He's thinking about it. I told him after I said, I was like, listen, ah, maybe he won't do it and we'll see if he wants to do it or not. But there's the gas piping, let me show you the meter. Here's that. We wanna cross this drop ceiling here through the cedar closet and over here, death hazard, like death box, all right? right to there and there's our meter so we're good here peter's cleaning up a little bit we're going to put these panels back on we have some uh one inch pipe straps every five feet along the way even though code specifies it needs to be 10 feet so we're good here these are 10 foot lengths but we're good i think we did a really really nice job here nice nice job let me show you the penetration through there's the closet hole and then we went up into the closet and through there so very very nice very nice job don't you agree mike I twist it back here. and i'm gonna keep it real i am gonna keep it real because this is uncut unedited raw see that we call that an elbow break why do we do that well because we're idiots no because we had a three-quarter inch pipe here and a three quarter inch pipe there. And we were not getting from point A to point B without crossing C and D. So we did that and it works. And we have 105,000 BTUs at 17 feet, we're golden. And we're golden according to the International Fuel Gas Code. If you look at a pipe sizing chart for half a PSI of pressure, natural gas with Steel pipe, we're acceptable. And how do I know that? Because I'm going to show you right now. Yes, piping. Yep. One. Yep. All right. So let's refer to the National um, International Fuel Gas Code. We're going to use the gas, natural gas pipe sizing, right? We have under 20 feet, right? And we have 105,000 BTUs, right? We ran one inch. Technically, I could have ran three quarter, yeah. right? Oh, I could have ran three quarter. We have the size of pipe in inches and we have the developed length. And we have, let's say we had 20, let's say we had 19 feet. That would be 20 feet. We're at 105,000 BTUs. How many, what size pipe do we need? 19 feet, 105,000 BTUs. 19 feet, 105,000. Yep. What size three, pipe? Would we, three quarter. Three quarter. So we put in one inch. Not bad. Yeah. Right? Why? Why? I don't know. I thought it was one inch. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. The answer is because I wasn't testing. I guessed. If I would have went to my fuel gas chart, I would have saw that I need three quarter inch pipe instead of one inch. And we would have gotten it done much easier. You know, Mike, I, I didn't One inch is required by law into a boiler room. Doesn't matter if you're using 20,000 BTUs. New York State Code says you must have a one inch gas line to your boiler. Is that really fast? Learn something new every day. And another thing I learned the other day, because now I'm reading the International Plumbing Code, the IPC book. I'm preparing for this test in South Carolina, right? Oh, the sun. I, I looked like St. Mike. The sun was shining in my head. Do you know that a expansion tank cannot be supported by the pipe that it's attached to? An expansion tank cannot be supported by the pipe that it's attached to. Solely supported by a pipe that it's attached to. So take, imagine you had three quarters over, a domestic thermal expansion tank, for example, right? Okay. Yeah, let's say you have a piece of three quarter running across the overhead of an unfinished basement, which is properly secured, right? And I cut in a T to hang an ST12. The ST12 cannot solely rely on that pipe for its support. That's according to International Plumbing Code. Wow. Yeah. Wow is right. Didn't know that. And there's a reason. Now, I guess, now that I know, there's a reason why they make these expansion tank clamps that mount to the wall. Yeah. But I've never had an inspect inspection. So you've got to mount that to the wall and then just pipe, pipe it in the expansion tank from where it's going to. To where it's going to. You learn something new every day. I also realized that it's actually a specific, I, I knew it wasn't a code, but I never actually saw it in the code book. Saddle valves. Okay. The piercing type yeah. for either waste 
right, connection or domestic uh, water connection is actually, it's, it's written in the specific code. Saddle valves are not a permitted connection for a domestic water supply system, potable water, you know, yeah. it's called, called like it is, potable yeah. water or waste drainage. Wow. It's not a permitted connection. I knew it wasn't code anyway, but I never actually saw it in the code book. Because actually, I'm, I'm reading the, the book cover to cover. Mm-hmm. Cause you know I ain't fucking I ain't failing this test. It's gonna be epic, folks. It's gonna be epic. I'm learning shit. That's right. Learn something new every day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is 11:30. It's time for us to get up out of here. I got it. Peace out. Peace out. Until next time. Be well. God bless. Stay safe. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Smash that thumbs up button. Like I want to smash your head open. Do it now. Thank you.